Welcome back to another interview here with System Hub. I'm the host, David Jennings, and I've actually got a guest on today that is our second time. I've uh, interviewed this guest once before. Not too sure if you missed the first interview, and if you haven't seen Mike O'Hagan before, I think you're in for a real treat. He's been doing business for over 38 years. He's the owner of Mini Movers, which was a business he bootstrapped from 200 bucks and a ute all the way up to an annual turnover of over $23 million with uh, over 350 employees uh, based all around Australia. So, um, and uh, in the Philippines as well. Up to date, he's got nine other businesses that he's interested in, in three different countries, he's on several different boards, uh, and he's very much the uh, entrepreneur and brains behind Mike's business tours, which is actually how I got to know him. I went on uh, one of Mike's tours, would be going back a good number of years. I'd already done quite a bit of offshoring and thought I knew everything, but it wasn't until I got on the ground and went through the tour and just really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I, you just can't be exposed to without going on a tour. So what I love most about Mike uh, is uh, is very no BS, very practical, down to earth. He's a business practitioner. So he's talking about things that he's actually implemented in his business. And most importantly, he's very much a lover of systems. So firstly, Mike, before we dive in, just like to welcome you to the call and, and thank you very much for making the time. Thanks, Dave. Great, great to share with everybody. It really is. I thought it's probably best to have a call with you, maybe get you to walk us through uh, some of the challenges that you see uh, small business owners having, and then we can move into some of the opportunities that creates for building teams over in the Philippines, but also where people are getting stuck. So when they do see the opportunity, they've got the best chance of success. So I'm not sure where you want to start, but that's kind of the direction I'd like to head. Uh, look, I, I, think, um, I think no matter where you are in life, you can grow and go forward by, by simply conceiving ideas, testing them in an affordable way, um, and measuring the response, those that don't work, which is most things we try, uh, we move away from or change, and those things that we do, that do work, we simply systemize and uh, duplicate. And the, the key to my business is that I've just followed the path, I, I've just systemized and duplicated what I've proven works. And you know, we're here today talking about systems and duplication and processes, that's the key. A business is nothing but a system. Otherwise, it's a trap that you have to work in. And um, mm. you don't want to go that. It is, you know, a business works for you. It should not be your life. It should provide for your lifestyle. It should not be your lifestyle. So the more yeah. I can share the system and the process, and the more you do, the better off everybody's going to be, Dave. That, that uh, process of extracting the business owner, because really that's what the business owner does. They go out, they... Um, solve problems, they figure out what is it we're selling, whom are we selling it to, and how do we do that really efficiently? And they are the problem solver. Oftentimes they get caught in that trap then of also being in delivery and a lot of those repetitive uh, tasks, and then they never escape those daily operations. I'd be interested in some of the insights that you might have picked up. Like, how does someone start to remove themselves? Uh, look, I like to. Look at a business and, and basically most businesses you can draw, th draw three circles. Uh, you need to have a process to get customers or there's plural, processes to get customers, several of them. You need processes to service those customers or whatever it is you do. And you need processes for administrating your business. And the first ones that everybody should get rid of is the administration. You need a bookkeeper, you need blah, blah, blah. As you grow up, get rid of all of that stuff. Somebody else can do all that for you. Um, um, accountancy, all that stuff. You get rid of so that get rid of the administration, and you, the business owner, need to work on those processes to get more customers, processes to service those customers. And you need, as you get those processes and you define them, then you need to systemize them. Then you need to put them into a form so you can train others. And then you've mm. got a lovely little machine going where others are coming in doing it your way because you created, it, and you just tinker with the systems and processes and get your tail out of the day-to-day -day work. That, that's the key. Mm. So three circles. Put, get a big whiteboard out, put, draw a big circle. What are our processes? Have we got to get new customers? How can we change those processes? How can we improve them? Continu continually improvement. And then a big, another big circle, our system, our processes is to produce whatever it is we sell. Um, so they get continuity, same way every time, all that sort of thing. And then, of course, administration, just get rid of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the start. And I think from there... People can see their business from a different view. They can do more a helicopter view over it. And um, then they can start to, to work through and, and, and just develop the processes. 
and then systemize them. Yeah. Mm. And uh, definitely some of the challenges that we see with the business owner, like they'll hear this and everybody, I don't think I've ever come across someone, a business owner and had the discussion about systems and processes and have them go, Oh yeah, they're not valuable. They're not useful in my business. So every business <laughs> owner recognizes that they're, they're valuable. The, the issue they have then is, is coming down to, well, how do we capture these? How do we document them? And there's, there's a lot of that. Hey, I feel like I need to be the one that, that does it. And that's a big problem for a lot of business owners. They get stuck in thinking, Oh yeah, I've got to do it. They're busy enough as it is. So that just goes on the to-do list, but obviously it's important, but not urgent. So they never ever do it. I think the initial sit down and plan that you talked about is great. The next step then once, okay, we've now figured out, well, here are the, the critical systems that we need to capture. What, what are, some, do you have any tips around, well, how do we capture this? How do we make this easy? Yeah, look, um, I remember very famously 30, 32 years ago when I started Minimovers sitting at this very brand new thing called a computer and discovering um, the word process we had in those days and, 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 and numbered lists. And I remember sitting at this computer and I worked out that when Mini Movers does a job, they do 28 things exactly the same way every time, from getting the job sheet, checking it for this, to driving out, parking, doing a con note, etc. It's just a, a structure, a, a process that we do the same way. So I got a Word document and I was typing that in. The, the joke that I'm laughing about was a, a memory of my father, a, a farmer who, who used to be, it was a retired farmer. And uh, he came in one day and he said, what are you doing? I said, Dad, we've got this thing called a computer and I'm developing this mini movers moving, moving system. And I called it a system in those days. Um, and I'm just putting it out. And he looked at me and said, you won't make any money sitting in a computer. You make more money to get out on those trucks and save yourself some wages. And, <laughs> and of mm. course, mini movers, 400 odd people moving furniture and big things because I systemized them at day one. So uh, look, I just simply, I, I, I'm a great, just simply use a Word document and a yep. numbered list start. And, and it's good because you can look at your list and change the order and push it up and down and just do dot points. Yes. Just dot points. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. That's, that's, that's a process, okay? Yeah. That's a process. And that's the basis of, from there you can expand it. You can expand it into a training system very, very easy by putting some columns beside it. Uh, you can, you, and then, of course, with it, your technology and the stuff you're doing with, in, in the back now, you can do a lot more with it. But it all starts, in my opinion, by sitting down and going, look, we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. And then if you put it in a Word document, then you remember, oh, you've got to do this, and then you get a sub list, and then you can just number it out. Number lists are perfect to yes. simply start the process. And honestly, it takes hardly any time to do. Yeah. Does. I think just, people just build it up in their head for some reason. They they overcomplicate. But I think a business with a collection of twenty to thirty systems that are critical for the delivery or the product or service, you get that down in bullet point for, format, and you'll see immediate improvements in efficiency, reduction in waste. So there's yeah, definitely the right thing. One area that I see, and you touched on it once before and it really resonated with me is this idea as well um the the point when you once you've got these documented then building out teams of people to to do it and particularly moving some of these um tasks offshore some people come into challenges um, trying to get things done offshore and i think a big part of it is not having these systems and processes in place i'd lo love to get your insights in there because you will see so many business owners try to move their back office over to the philippines you'd see what's working and what's not sure i so today i own i think about 10 businesses in three different countries uh, mini movers is, is just but one of my businesses now and and um, some of them are in partnership, some of them I own fully. So everything systems and processes around me. And I live in the Philippines now, I have done for the last five years, and I've helped lots and lots of um, Australians or Western businesses set up here, over 400 to date. And I see the common mistakes over and over again. They come and they look at my the fact that I've got a, a personal assistant uh, uh, who is an Upworker, by the way. I don't have them in an office based situation. Upworker, personal assistant. And they go, oh, I want a personal assistant. And, and Honestly, they've given no thought to what they need that person to do or what mm. they're going to do. If they sat down and thought, well, they could do this, 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 then they've got to stop and have a really close look as, is that really going to make me more money? 
Yeah. Yes, it'll free my time up. Yes, it'll free my time up. But will it make more money? And I'm going to tell you, in most cases, a PA doesn't do that, right? It doesn't make you more money. So, um, but, but if you do it right, look, if you're going to start moving some processes out, as people do and should do, because it's a wonderful resource, start with some of the actual business processes. I remember when Mini Movers started offshoring, and we had to, we were in financial strife for the GFC and and things got really tight and people were losing their jobs and I managed to stop that by offshoring. The first mm. thing we did take some of our very simple structured process, for instance, uh, employment, recruitment. We have three to 400 people a week applying for the job. Somebody's got to go through all those resumes and work mm. out that this one's possible, this one's no good, this one's no good, and go back to the, the ones and say, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right? Mm. And, and then, thing now, that's a simple process. That was one of the very first processes we moved offshore and that made us money from day one. And it's a very simple structured thing. And we sat down and we did dot points and used technology and Skype one-on-one -on -one and we trained them up. So the biggest mistake I see is that when people offshore, they don't really have a good group of what they're gonna offshore. They need to sit down and work out what tasks. They, they think about jobs, it's not about jobs, it's about tasks. That, that's, Sit, sit, sit down and work. Ask, there's, a, there's a process, there's a process, there's a process. And if I move those first, they're easy. You know? Mm. Like, you know, a simple one is my emails. My PA goes through my email uh, inbox all the time and she deletes out all the rubbish. So I don't get any rubbish in my email. She also responds to the common sense ones. You know, you know, David, you send me an email saying, Mike, can we do an interview? Well, Emma's going to go in there and she's going to, she can make a decision. She knows my diary. She runs my diary. She, I'm not going to bounce back to that. She's going to pick it up and do it. Now, you, they're simple processes. And for each thing, we've got to set structure around how we do that. Uh, and that's, that's, if you get that stuff out, do it first. That's when you're really going to start freeing your time up and making more profit in your business. And at the end of the day, it's about profit. Mm, I think, um, and that matches incredibly well with what we teach with uh, systemology. That first step around the defining stage is about thinking, well, what is the product and service that you're selling? And then from start to finish, how do you lead generate? How do you convert that lead? How do you onboard? How do you deliver? How do you get them to come back? Because it comes down to how do you get paid? If you figure out what that is and you systemize it and then start to break off some of the simple components in in those that that small set of systems that you develop uh, then that's when you get the great traction and then moving those potentially offshore as as we've done as well and i, I think that just creates a, a huge opportunity for particularly australian based business owners and, and business owners where the labor costs are really really high because some tasks don't make financial sense to get done locally and, and you would not do them. Whereas when you move them offshore and create opportunities for um, people in emerging economies, uh, then certain tasks like following up people who sent in a resume, like you did with mini movers, how many companies here in Australia just wouldn't reply? Like you send in the resume and you don't hear anything. Whereas that creates a real nice touch point for mini movers for the person to go, even though I didn't get a job, that was still a good experience. To us, it's all branding, mate. We, they're future customers. We, we, don't, we never miss an opportunity to brand. We never, I'll, look, I'll share something. I've got some very, very large businesses now, and most of them started from very, very small. You never, ever stop systemizing. So Mini Movers is a really good one to pick on because 30, 32 years ago, I, by accident, uh, discovered that hourly rate local moving is much, much better than anything that was on available at the time. So I invented and developed hourly rate local moving. Now today it's very common, but I was the market leader. I was the guy that sort of worked that out. And we, through trial and error and mistake and, and its success, managed to perfect hourly rate local moving. Now we perfected each thing at a time. We perfected the selling of it, which was very difficult. People wanted fixed price quotes and we had to convince them. We perfected that. We perfected how to employ people, our strategies. We only take unskilled people and we bring them in and we train them and all that sort of stuff. We perfected all that. Uh, then we perfected, um, and it just worked its way through. We perfected uh, our buying trucks. We systemized buying trucks. Believe it or not, we had a structured system for a truck. It just went click, 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 and the truck turned up and it was exactly as we wanted it. Uh, mm. We had systems. Or we had systems and processes for registration. We had 
And then we systemized opening in Greenfield, and this is when we started really growing, is when we managed to perfect and systemize opening in a new city. And we could go bang, 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 bang. It took us six months lead in. We could switch a whole lot of things on to a structured program in six months and have enough work to make a profit from day one. And that's when we started going. And then we started doing city, city, city. We never got to opening in countries. Unfortunately, the GFC just cut us off as I was about to systemize opening in new countries. And they're all systems, they're all processes. So it never stops. It, as you get bigger and bigger, that thing goes wider and you build more systems and there's more processes feeding the tunnel. If you want, as I did, continuous growth, market domination. Yes, yeah. And I think that kind of plays to one of your early goals for Mini Movers, which was to build it as the McDonald's of removalists, very much focusing yep. it with the idea of systemization, because that's where the scale comes from. Yep, I, I was a devotee or studied McDonald's business model for, and very much so, and I understood systemizing and, and you know, you know, systemizing and duplicating, and that's exactly what I, tr I did in Mini Movers. You know, it's a very, very Mini Movers today is a very, very high tech country, uh, co company. We use a lot of amazing technology, basically, to monitor the performance of our movers. So all about, you know, we got today we got 450 young guys moving furniture. Electronically, we know exactly which are the best ones, and not oh, those ones not as good. Um, and as a result, we can control our workmanship. And that was very critical to being able to run a large operation with a lot of people in an area, in a service area where the workmanship is absolutely critical, totally critical. And that was, that was, that was what it was all about. That was my goal. I could see I needed to um, monitor the effectiveness of my workmanship um, standards. Uh, so I knew exactly instantly what was going wrong and that we could step in and correct it. Very, very important when you go and start scaling up. Uh, and we perfected that. That's how good we got with our systems and processes, or we are today mm. with our systems and processes, mm. as you do. And now, of course, it's all about offshoring and, and doing it in much lower rates than other countries. You know, the Philippines here, average wage here, uh, and this is in an offshoring sense, which is double the local rate of pay, is about $100 Australian a week, gross. Uh, yeah. Very, very clever, uh, well, smart people, um, very well educated, Interestingly, the average Filipino knows about Australia as much as the average Australian knows about the Philippines. Got a vague idea where it is, had something to do with World War II and that's it. In the case of the Philippines, uh, they know we've got kangaroos. Thank God we've got kangaroos. If we didn't have those, we wouldn't exist in the world, I've got to tell you. <laughs> they know we've got kangaroos but couldn't tell you where we are. And they're very, very Americanized. And that's our challenges here. So you've got to come into this country with systems and processes uh, you've got to be able to sit them down. The key to using this wonderful resource is in education and teaching them, training them. Um, if you don't train them, they're not going to be any good to you. And I see people hiring them, uh, thinking, expecting them to think for themselves without any training and then complaining to me it doesn't work. And I see that over and over again. And of course, what's lacking is this systemizing processing uh, step that you really do and the, the step that comes in behind it, which is training. Um, mm. I mean, really, that's, that, that's just a, a system in itself. You, you need some form of onboarding and training system for staff, which gets yep. them from a, I don't know much about your business to I'm fully functioning and can add value. And you want to do that in the shortest possible time. And the simplest way is to have a simple checklist and have somebody doing it, explain it to them, and then have a different person go back and check that they understood what they were told. If you do that, they're trained. It's mm -hmm. no more than that. You don't need a special trainer. My best trainers have always been the people doing the job. Mm. But you need, a, 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 you need a process, a system in there to make sure that they are, everything's covered and they did understand it. Yeah. So if we kind of um, do the overview, because I almost like breaking these things down into a system in itself. Um, we At this point, let's pre-assume that the person watching this has an existing business. They already know their target market. They're selling their products and services and they're getting some good results. Maybe some things aren't quite stacking up or they haven't got quite visibility. Maybe they're very much in the center of the, the whole process. The first step would be to go, well, let's define what's going on here. Let's actually do identify which of those critical systems for the delivery. Then 
make it as simple as possible just to create some checklists for each of those uh, main tasks. Um, once you do that, then you would start to look at uh, from an administration point of view, what are the easy things to shift off the table, but are still critical for the delivery of the product or service. So we know it's a money task that must be done. Um, then potentially move offshore and uh, wrap training around, you know, obviously having some sort of recruitment system to find that right candidate, um, but then also have some training around skilling them up and getting them onboarded and then in conducting on a regular basis. When it comes to the project management side of things, because I think a lot of the how-to and the training, um, that's kind of effectively what System Hub does. I'd like to know um, in some of the businesses, and maybe it varies, uh, how you then manage projects. How do you delegate and define who's doing what by when? And how is that kind of captured and, and um, yeah, centrally stored so everybody knows where everything's up to? Yeah, projects are the wild card. You've got your structured systems you do all the time, every day. Um, and uh, then projects becomes the wild card. Of course, there's lots, you've got apps. There's lots of apps nowadays that you can do to track all that. And because they're different, they're, they're wild. There's no, you try and put time limits around it, try and do that. Some can, some can't. It's just, it's, it's really, that's where the crazy area is, it, 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 it genuine is. The, um, just back to your systems and processes, just another observation is that every time something went wrong in mini movers, it was interesting. Everybody would be focused on what, what actually happened. Um, you know, oh, you damaged this. And they go, yeah, and they go, what, what do you think of that? And I go, well, I'm just trying to, and I'd be two steps back trying to think about which part of my system did that work or not work or what caused this, not the actual incident. Yes, yeah. Every time there's a, something goes wrong, don't look at what went wrong. Look at your systems and processes. Was it there? Was it not there? Should it be added in? Should it not be added in? Being very, very careful of doing knee-jerk reaction to something that's really probably a once-only thing. But um, So that's con yes. continual improvement, of course, as you do. But um, Yeah, the, that, um, that makes good sense. When it comes to, and, and maybe I used the word project, and that was um, causing might have got a little confused there. If, if you think in terms of then, I know, let's say in mini movers, you have uh, your mm -hmm. app where you can log your remove list. When it comes to even like maybe back office mm -hmm. type stuff, or maybe it's another business, um, how do you then manage the um, who's doing what by when? Like, yes, there is the checklist, but is there any way that they will either sign off and say, yes, I've done this, or is it just, hey, the checklists are there and, you know, I'm as part of your job, you, you know, the responsibility is to be following these processes? Um, with the training system, it's now become electronic. Yep. So there's an overview that's, and there's timing stuff in there. So when, it work, when an employee comes in and they go into the training program, it's setting its own stuff and it's bringing up on, on, it's telling, it's highlighting when they're not trained by it by a certain time. Yes. Um, the, um, the actual process of moving, and, and uh, let me say this, on the front end, the bits that deal with the customers as far as the, pay, the phones or the yep. online booking or the, opera, the guys going out moving furniture, that stuff is so systemized, it's amazing, right? Yes. The, Further you get into the back end, into administration, um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, etc. It's not that systemized. It really is not, and it's always been. And never we've tried to, but it's just it's just difficult down there to, to do that because there's yes. too many wild, crazy things that are different. Um, yeah. That aren't the one-off things. But as far as moving is concerned, as far as you know, employment recruiting is very automated, uh, very systemized. Not so much automated, but systemized. The computer screen's telling them when to do things yep. um, and make sure they're done. Um, so recruiting is done. The sales process is extremely, from marketing is very, very, uh, nowadays marketing is all about lead gen. So they, we have a massive lead gen that, that processes uh, two and a half thousand leads a day. Yep it through a system where we contact roughly 25, 30% of those a day, turning them into half a million dollars worth of moves a week. That'll give mm. everybody a scale of what happens. Um, that's, that's 
it's got quite a few human beings involved in that, but it is very, very process driven. Um, the time things is when things are done by time, that only applies really to the training. Uh, the rest of it, the jobs are very simple. You know, you know, we have an automatic system allocating work, logging on, logging off, charging customers. That's all yes, computerized. Yes. I can't go wrong. Yep. Uh, in fact, we, we do reach the point now we have a massive danger. If we lose the internet, we just simply stop. And yes, there's nothing. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, because I've grown a business from pre-computer days to where we are now. And along the way, we resisted a lot of things because, oh, what happens if we lose the internet, you know? And it's like electricity. We sort of get to the stage where we just expect them. If it switches off, the whole thing just stops. Just yeah, simple as that. yeah. You know, yeah, if, you, if you switch communication off, if you switch the phone network off, we just completely are dead in the water. Yeah. I don't I don't think we could do a thing. I think it would just stop. As, as most just, businesses. Like, I mean, that's like, yeah, you don't have any power. Yeah. <laughs> Once the power is off, yeah. then there's not much you can do. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah exactly. so it's really... Just, we've become dependent on some fundamental stuff. But that's just the way it is. And, um, yeah. um, but, you know, that's... That brings the other thing, and how did they, we develop systems? Well, they're originally manual. You know, I remember writing the ERP system for many movers years ago, and it took us our third to go, but we used to have this system of, of we had a wall that was full of hooks. Yep. And the top corner would be the workbook next month. The next one would be the workbook next week. And then we'd have this week, and it would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they'd all be different hooks, and they'd be, have bulldog clips, and they'd have... Um, uh, job sheets on them and then we had job sheets which we used to do in, in right out in, in 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 carbon and of course computerization came along and you won't believe this we had three attempts to computerize our systems and build our processes before we worked out that what we needed to do was sleep what we're currently doing and just write the program around that don't try and do it some other weird way mm. and so we a guy hard code our system and still today they're still writing it they've always been a continuous job for 25 years now and and we just did the manual system into the computer system and followed the same processes in other words if i can do this once you've proven it works don't change it just simply move it from a manual system into an electronic system mm, yes and yeah that's a big tip that people try and change too much and try and take, make things too complicated it's, if it's just as working like that, we'll just computerize it that way. Yes. You know? Yeah. I reckon that's a key uh, takeaway is the simplification. Cause I see that oftentimes with uh, systems and processes where people will start to systemize. And in that stage of systemization, they start to try and think about optimization and making it just right. And they're putting all these bells and whistles and then things get, complicated and then they're trying to make it just perfect and then that gets in the way of actually just doing it whereas you'd almost be better off just almost capturing what you're doing already having a basic checklist and seeing the wins that way then like mike had mentioned earlier wait for the fire to come up and then go oh something happened here all right now let's review the system what what could have been done in the system to re reduce the likelihood of that fire happening is a much better way yep. to do it Yep. Every time there's a fire, I don't look at the fire. I look at, look at what we could have done before that to prevent it. Mm -hmm. so don't get distracted by the fire. It's the system that was the problem, not the fire. In the tail end, because some of the challenges that, that people have, I know they're going to get quite you know, inspired and excited about uh, what they've learned uh, as far as capturing some of their simple systems and processes and then looking to move it offshore. Do you? Because you're really strong in that area as well. Do you have any tips on if I start to take some of these back end offices uh, 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 operations, what, what they can do to in increase that likelihood of success. As you know, Dave, I, I run a, a structured three day learning tour in the Philippines where uh, 420 Westerners so far have come up here over the last five years. And I spend three days with them and we drive around and we visit probably about 20 different workplaces that are doing absolutely amazing stuff. And everybody got to keep everybody's jaw off the ground. And from micro businesses through to public listed companies, everybody learns a whole lot of stuff. And of course, being in the middle of that and being very, very involved in that deeply now for the last five years, I see lots and lots of mistakes, but I see some massive successes. I really, yeah. really do. And you know, 
these workers at $100 a week, you can, you can build whole processes in your business that you couldn't dream of. You know, that, uh, that uh, lead gen system I talked about, uh, that yeah. many movers, there is no way known you could even think about building that in Australia. Absolutely yes. no way known. And um, uh, it, it was just a process of experimenting and we could, have, we could afford to experiment and try things and get it to work. And it's, great. it's extremely cost effective. It's extremely cost effective. And, um, and uh, I did, did want to make a point. No, anywhere else. So the reality is of offshoring, as crazy as it may sound, the vast majority of offshoring up here is not jobs out of Australia. It's new processes businesses have invented because they couldn't afford to, afford to do them in, in Australia. Yeah, and, and I reckon that was the key distinction because you had said, oh, we couldn't make it work in Australia. And really what means why it can't work in Australia is if you were doing that manually here in Australia with the labour costs, the cost of lead would be too high um, and, and you wouldn't be able to afford to complete that task because then it's costing you however many hundreds of dollars to generate the lead, um, which you've then got to convert, whereas you move that offshore and that cost comes down significantly. And, and the reverse of what a lot of people think with offshoring is actually true. It can create and generate more jobs in Australia. Mini movers, there's a good chance it would have gone, or you'll, you'll know better than anyone, gone out of business if it didn't move some of those processes. But now you can employ Absolutely. a huge amount of Australians as a result of, of saving that business. And sell all around the world, which means money's coming back into Australia. So Australian economy is going to boom if Australian businesses become super efficient and can sell their product worldwide. And that's what's happening right now. That's what's holding us up. You can't see it because they don't see export in the way it used to. They're still trying to measure export going across a wharf. And mm. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's going through the air a lot quicker. But uh, it, look, it's a phenomenal resource. It works br absolutely brilliantly. Um, it's amazing what people are doing and new businesses that are being developed and new processes that uh, existing businesses can do here. And that's, like I said, three days of intensive learning. Um, 50% would be a massive dose of entrepreneurship with, from me where I'll shove you and push you to, to get out of your business and work on it and, and, and develop a bigger business to feed a lifestyle and not let it become your lifestyle. And I'll, I'll talk a lot about systems and processing and duplication and, and all that sort of stuff because that's my background, that's what I do. And 50% is learning how to use this resource up here, how to best manage them, um, the differences, how to make it work well for you. It's about high productivity. Listen, some quick numbers that we have now got pretty well exact. Wages here are about 90% lower than Australia. By the time you put in office costs, and we do believe that office-based work is a lot better than home-based, and we can talk about that on tour, we, we have the numbers for both. Um, Office-based, at the end of the day, they work up, being, they work, it works out with, with computer costs, management, airfares and everything, it works out about 78% lower than Australia. Mm. And on average, the actual workers are between two to three times more productive than Australians. So you mm. take that 78% saving and multiply it by two or three, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenally different number. And mm. with that, you can genuinely build businesses. And I'm talking, I'm a removal company and we're doing it. Um, you know, carpet cleaning, like one of the largest carpet cleanings in Australia is the does everything here except clean carpets. Now, when I say that, they've only got they've only got um, they've only got franchisees in Australia. They find new potential franchisees from here, from the Philippines. They engage them, they onboard them, they train them, they start them. They they also do the sales, the, the all that stuff, the marketing, and all that. It's all done here, which makes it a very very efficient organisation. It's grown through every major town and every minor town in Australia. Now that's just, that's just in this home service sector, apart from building startups, I'm doing a heap of stuff with startup and it can build a team. You know, you don't, no longer do you have to give one or $200,000 to, to, to build a tech platform anymore. That's ridiculous. You can, you know, you can get coders here uh, at a fraction of the price, get a team, team of two or three or four of them in, in a room, two or three months later, they'll produce the product. Then you add in the marketing people, then you add in, a few other things and you build a team and you get tacit knowledge and you grow it out. And the startup stuff's all about, you can cash flow, bootstrap them really easy and grow them mm. so, so easy. I'm doing a heap of work with those now, Dave, a lot more than when you came up. Um, just so many ways you can do it. Law, accounting, um, 
engineering, oh, so much stuff in engineering here. Uh, it's all being done. It's all being done very effectively. And the businesses, are, as I said, are everything from small micro through the big. Um, and you can use it to, to, to just create a lot of value to develop profit. And, and in most cases, it's really good for Australia. Mm -hmm. I think I, I definitely can't uh, support what you're doing enough. Like it's, um, it, it's great to see. I, I think it was just tough taking that uh, leap uh, to do it even before I met you. And, and I know a lot of business owners struggle to make that leap. And that's why the tour is such a great thing because you, you get there and you get that real hands-on experience. I'll make sure we pop a, a link um, to like for people to be able to check out um, your tours. Like it's just Mike's business tours and we'll have a link uh, nice and handy so people can check it out. Listen, I'm semi-retired nowadays and, and travel a lot and, and do the, the only have to job, I only have to business I've got is my tours. I actually host them myself. Everything else is done by other people as far as booking them and all the rest of it. But I'm always happy to Skype up with people, chat to them on Skype and find out, you know, just chat to them about their business, where they're going and 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 uh, just to see if there's anything suitable and give them any ideas. I don't chat. It's not that. To me, this is my give back. My uh, Look, I'm a successful entrepreneur that's gone on and sort of semi-retired but kept my businesses in for my income. Um, <laughs> I, uh, my give back today is, is to create more entrepreneurs. I, I, I honestly believe the future of Australia for my grandchildren can only come from entrepreneurs that we create today. I believe as a country, we do a pretty bad job of that. And I'm trying to correct that by pushing as many, and I push you, as you know, I push and push to create more business, you know, create, create entrepreneurship, get outside the box, create something new, sell it, duplicate it, systemize it, and um, it's good for everybody. So that's where I'm at. So I'm happy to Skype with anybody. Just put my name into Google. I pretty will pop up any of my websites. I pretty will got forms on it. It'll come through to me. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn if you like. Whatever it is, more than happy to, Dave. In yeah. any way. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate uh, yeah the generosity of, of time and knowledge. I know a lot of people get a lot from this. And um, yeah, it's I think the perfect combination for a business and just about every business struggles with this it's the missing piece when you combine structured systems and processes having them centrally stored with great talented cost-effective team members that's when the magic happens so yeah i i i love the way that you've explained it and a really good example of it like live application like this is real world business so um, again i'll pop all the links thanks again for your time mike and uh, no doubt we'll chat soon Thanks, everybody. I hope, you, I hope I've helped everybody. That's great. Thank you.